Hey everybody, welcome back to another fun and exciting pre-algebra class. Today we are going to be starting chapter number six. After this chapter, we are going to be halfway done with the book. So keep working hard. You're doing great. Um, here's what we're going to do in this lesson. We are going to talk about the area of an object. Remember when we talked about perimeter, perimeter was the distance around the object. Now area is the amount of space inside of the object. So it's like in the middle of the object. What's in here? How much space is in the middle of the object? Do it look down here at the screen. We're going to talk about the first shape that we'll um, be talking about is the square. It means that every side is the same. It means that it has four right angles, okay? Every corner is a perfect 90 degree angle. And so you should know some different things. It's a closed shape, all right? These are things that we kind of learned in the last chapter. Now, when we get to the square, when we're gonna talk about area, there's really a couple different ways to kind of talk about this. One way that I wanna show you is the idea of area is a square measurement, okay? What do I mean by that? So this is actually four units along this top. So let me just try to, and these won't probably come out perfect, but we'll do our best here, okay? And so we'll put one here, and then we'll put one here. So there are four units across this top. What does that mean? Okay, that means that there's one, two, three, four units across the top. Well, if you notice, we also have four units going this way. So let me try to draw that a little bit better um, so that you can see that. And what I want you to see is that when it's a four by four, there are four squares by four squares. So when we're doing, that's not too bad. So when we're doing area, we're dealing with squares. Here's really all we're doing. Let me show you this. This is kind of cool. Okay, let me blow this up just a little bit. We're counting how many squares are in the middle of this object. So one, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, and 16. Now our squares are not perfect. I didn't draw them perfect, but I think you get the concept. This shape, the area of this shape is 16 units. And maybe these are inches, okay? So each one is an inch, so we would have 16 inches. Now be careful with this because this is 16 inches squared or 16 square inches. In other words, each one of these boxes right here is a square, and there are 16 squares, 16 inches squared, 16 square inches. Whenever you're dealing in area, you're dealing in squares. Now, let me show you a little bit of a shortcut, right? Because we don't wanna, we don't wanna count squares every time that we go to do um, anytime we go to do area, that's going to take forever, especially a big shape. We're going to take forever to do this. Let me show you this formula. So if we're doing the area of a square, we can do side squared, side squared. So if I take my side, which is four. So if I just plug my side into this formula, a equals four squared or a equals four times four which is 16 inches squared, okay? And so there's my answer, there's that 16 again. How did we get that? By taking our side four and by squaring it. Four times four is 16. All right, now you need to take your pencil and your notebook and you need to write this down right here, okay? Trying to warn you, trying to tell you, your quizzes, your tests, you are going to need to know your formula for area. Area equals area of a square. Here's how I would write it. I would write it like this. I would write the name of the shape, so square, and then I'd write area or A equals side squared, okay? Just like I have it right there. Now, anytime we get a square, you can always default back to this formula and just take your side and then square it. This does not mean times two. We've already worked on that this year. That means times itself. 
four times four in this case, whatever it is. Um, if your side is six, it would be six times six. If the side is 12, it would be 12 times 12, okay? All right, so that's the square. Let's look at the next one, the rectangle or the parallelogram. In a rectangle or a parallelogram, your, your formula is always the same, and I'm gonna show you both. This first one that I'm showing you is a rectangle. The next um, one that I show you will be a parallelogram, but the, the formula is always the same. It's always the base times the height. And I'm just going to put BH. All right? I'm not going to put a time sign in between there. I'm not going to put a dot in between there because we know that if there's two letters next to each other, right, from algebra, two letters next to each other, that means what? That means multiply. That's right. So the formula is A equals BH. So again, take your in your notebook and write that formula down. You're going to need that formula. Now you just kind of plug into it and you say, but Mr. Steve, this is not the base. That's the top of the thing. Well, this thing is also three down here and this thing is also seven here because it's a rectangle. So the base is technically down here what the shape is sitting on, but it's the same as up there, so it doesn't matter. If, if they give you the number on top, it's fine. It's still the base. So this would be the base. Why? Because that's what it's standing on. It stands on the base. The, the base is the bottom thing that it's sitting on. So it's sitting on a three. Okay, three units. Three, let's call these feet. All right, we'll call seven feet and three feet. So the base is three in this one. So we're going to have A equals three times now we need to put the dot because now we can't just put two numbers next to each other because that's going to look like it's a 37 right because the height is seven so three times seven the area equals 21. now don't forget every single time any formula that you're working with area we have to put the measurement in square units so this is feet squared why do you have to do that? Because again, this is like having three and seven. So I don't know if I'm actually going to put seven in here, but um, it's close. I don't know, maybe like that. So there's going to be seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got it. All right. And then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And there is 21. So we could count them out, we could do it that way, but isn't it faster just to multiply, right? Learn the formula, and then you don't have to count through all those things. Now, I told you that it was going to be the same for a parallelogram. It's a little bit tricky with the parallelogram, but it's going to be the same with the parallelogram. All right, so now, the, the formula is A equals BH. Now here's the problem. The the base is eight, so we'd have area equals eight times. Now you might be thinking, oh, my height is five. No, it's not, okay? This five, this is actually called, so this is the base, and this is actually called the slant. Or I've heard it called the slant height, but it's the slant, okay? It's the slant that it sits on. Now, here's the problem. This formula does not use the slant. It uses the height. What is the height? Here's the height of a parallelogram. The height is the distance from the top to the bottom. It is not the slant. This is not the unit that we use. We need the height of the object. And in this case, we will call the height four. And let's call these um, meters. So these are meters, four meters. So there's our, our base is eight, our height is four. So it's going to be eight times four would be the way that you would solve this one. And then eight times four is 32. So this would be the area equals 32 meters because these are meters. And remember, we're in area, so it's always squared. I don't know if this will help you, but I've told my students before, think area, squarea, right? It rhymes, you know, area rhymes with squarea. You're like, Mr. Steve, squarea is not a word. I know, I know, I know. But now that I said it, now you'll remember it, right? Area, squarea, 
all right? So um, they don't rhyme, but I made them rhyme. So um, whenever you're dealing with area, always use a square. Always, always, always in your measurement, okay? So that's the parallelogram, and the parallelogram works the same way as the rectangle, except for, don't forget about that slant height right there. You don't want to use the slant height. You want to use the height from the top to the bottom. Next shape that we have is the triangle. Now I'm going to show you something really cool about the triangle. Okay, let me let me show you something real fast. And I'm going to have to take all of this stuff off here. So I'm going to just do magic right now. Wasn't that cool? Did you see that? That was magic. I just wiped it all away. All this. No, I didn't. I paused the video and did it. And then I cut it. Okay, yeah. Camera tricks, right? All right, so watch this. Watch what happens when I take this shape right here and I draw a diagonal. Or what happens when I cut it in half. All right, so I'm going to cut this shape, this parallelogram, I'm going to cut it in half. Look what I created. I created, let's just talk about one of the sides. I created on this top side, I created a what? What did I create up here? I created a triangle. That's right. And so I, I cut this off. Okay, I got rid of that part. When you cut a parallelogram in half, you create a triangle. I can do the same thing up here on my rectangle, right? So we cut the rectangle in half. Notice what we've created. We have created a triangle, okay? And so here's the formula for a triangle. It's a really easy formula. What was the formula for a rectangle or a parallelogram? Well, it was area equals BH, right? So if we take that and cut it in half, okay? Now, I, I don't really like this formula this way. Here's the way I like to write it. I cut it in half this way, okay? Now, you can cut it in half the other way. You can put half times, but I like to just divide it by two. You do it how you want to. I think the book does it. Area equals one-half BH, and that's fine. Um, you're, you're going to get the same answer. So whichever way you like, write this formula down right here for the triangle. 1 half BH or BH cut in half divided by 2, okay? So whichever way you like, you can do it and you'll get the same answer. Now, let's go over to this triangle right here and let's kind of talk about it the same way that we talked about the parallelogram. Now, what, what's going on here is that I have the base, right? It's sitting on the 7. The 7 is the base. So we can go ahead and plug in over here area equals... 7 something divided by 2. 7 times the height divided by 2. But we don't know what the height is. Look, that's not the height. That's not the height. Those are both slants, right? Okay. So these slants can't be the height. Okay. So these are not going to work. So what do we need to do? We need to have a height. So what I need to do is I need to take the distance from this top to this bottom, to the base. So we go from the peak of the point to the base. And, you know, I don't know what that is. We'll call this 2. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up, okay? So we'll call this 2. So now over here, the height is 2. So 7 times 2 divided by 2. And now you just solve that out. So I would do it, you know, first solve this. So it's 7 times 2 is 14 divided by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. The area equals 7 units. We didn't put a unit. We'll call this miles. Okay, those, that's a big triangle. So it's miles. So we'll go with 7 miles squared. And that would be our answer. So base times height divided by 2. All right, and then the last one that we're going to talk about is the trapezoid. Now, maybe you don't even know what a trapezoid is. Okay, well, that's fine. It kind of looks a little bit like a triangle with the with the point, all right, with the top knocked off of it. So, you know, kind of like this, but it doesn't have that. It doesn't have the top of the triangle. Another way to look at it is if we drew two lines right here, what do we have? So we have a rectangle here in the middle, and we have a triangle here, and we have a triangle here. So there's a couple different ways to look at this trapezoid but a trapezoid is an interesting shape 
and you know you can look at it kind of a couple different ways um, but it has a formula so thankfully we have a formula that we can go to so what is the formula for the trapezoid it's a little bit more complex than the other ones it is the height times base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 you could also put the one half out front like the um, like the triangle had and that's fine um, but really it's kind of the same thing and notice we need the height again right these slants aren't going to work we don't want those slants net I'm gonna tell you right now never use slants when you're trying to figure out the area that'll mess you up right there don't do it always find the height the height typically like right now at this point is going to be given to you later in geometry class when we get there you're going to have to figure out the height but for right now the height's going to be given to you and the height is this number right here i don't know what the height is again i'm just guessing we'll call this height six okay and so you're just going to plug in what are you going to plug in now look when i said base one and base two think of this as you know and, and it can be either one but we'll call this bottom one base one and we'll call this top one base two and because you could flip the thing right you could flip it over so it's sitting on the other base and we'll just call that base one base two you really call it whatever you want but base one base two works in our formula now what we're gonna do is so um, this is the height and this is the base two and this is the base one so we're just gonna plug all these things into the formula where they go look here's base two here's the height and here's base one so just go ahead and plug it in so the height is six and then parenthesis base one is ten plus base two is three and that's all divided by two and now you always want to on these you always want to follow order of operations so you're going to do the numerator first always solve your fraction bar first we're going to do inside the parentheses and so 10 plus 3 is going to be 13 so we're gonna have 6 times 13 divided by 2 now let me show you some magic here and maybe you'll like the magic and maybe you won't like the magic I can reduce this fraction right now so I could take this and say 2 goes into 2 one time and 2 goes into 6 three times and so now I'm, I just need to multiply 3 times 13 and that's going to give me 3 times 3 9 3 times 1 39 okay 39 is my answer that was with a little magic right there okay right I just reduced the fraction let me show you how to do it the other way and then um, you know just do it like this so what is 6 times 13 well I don't really know that one I know 6 times 12 though 6 times 12 is 72 72 plus 6 that gives me to my 13 so that would be 78 divided by 2 what's 78 divided by 2 I don't know let's go ahead and do that one 78 divided by 2 that goes 3 times 6 1 18 2 into 8 goes 9 there's my 39 remember I got I had 39 as my answer so there's my 39 again you could do it either way okay and you would get the same answer so reduce your fraction is fine or go ahead and multiply this out first and then divide by 2 fine you're still gonna get 39 now 39 what I don't know we didn't give it an uh, you know a unit so we'll call this one we've used meters we've used inches uh, we've used feet we haven't used yards yet alright so this one will be yards and so it'll be yards squared 39 yards squared is how you would do that one all right so there are I think I gave you at least four formulas right there I think five different types of shapes um, you should have written every one of those formulas down and you should have written the uh, what they were with it so that way when you need to find the area of a square you just go to that formula memorize it though okay you wrote it down but the goal is to memorize all of those formulas plug it in work it and uh, you know get your correct answer you know what I'm just gonna tell you a secret right now um, if you want to use a calculator go ahead and use a calculator right now okay now I don't typically let my students in seventh and eighth grade use a calculator 
but you guys are so smart. You got it. All right. Go ahead and use a calculator for this section. You know, we might, we're probably going to go back to not using a calculator again, but that will help you to learn these formulas because if you get to play on the calculator, it's going to be fun. All right. So use your calculator. Don't tell your teacher I told you that. Okay. So if I'm not your teacher, then don't tell your teacher that somebody told you to use a calculator, but I'm going to let you use a calculator right here. So have fun. Use that calculator. Um, but memorize these formulas because they are really, really important for you in the future in geometry class and in the rest of this book too, okay? All right, that's all I got for you. If you missed anything, slide it back, watch it again. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.